Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today we'll be taking a look at how to use automation inside your DAW to compress your tracks. Now in many cases, of course, you'll use a compressor plug-in or a hardware device to compress and control the dynamics of your signals. But there are certain cases where it's very useful to be able to take manual control over that process. That's what we'll be looking at today. When you're working with multiple tracks, one of the things that can happen is large peaks in some of those tracks can combine together to overload your master output. The individual tracks are fine, there's not any overloads there, but when you mix them together, the signal jumps up and overloads our output. Let me show you what I mean. I've got a track here that was recorded with three microphones and a pickup output from an acoustic guitar, and when they're played back, the individual tracks are fine, but you'll see that the master overloads. Now we don't want that to happen. Now one thing we could do is turn down those individual tracks, and in this case that'd be fine. But if we had other instruments and we start turning down that track, then we've got to adjust our whole mix to compensate for that, and that's something that we don't usually want to take the time to do. We could fix this problem by using a compressor or a limiter, but really we're only trying to catch a couple of the loudest peaks, so I find it more effective to go in and use micro-automation techniques, or what I call manual compression, to compensate for those peaks, bring them down a little bit, and make sure that we're not getting a distorted output from our master. Now one of the nice things in Pro Tools is that it shows us that we've got an overload going on here, but also down here it tells us how much. We've got 1.2 dB too much going on above zero, which is giving us that red light. So let's go ahead and clear those peaks. We'll clear this as well, and we'll jump over to our audio waveform screen, or our edit screen, and take a look at where that's happening. So we'll start our playback. So here's our peak right here. This is the one that's causing our master to overload. Now what we want to do is draw a quick automation envelope that turns that down just on that peak to drop that level. To do that, the first thing I like to do is select my four tracks and group them so when I make a change to one track, it's carried through to all the rest of the tracks. So to do that, we'll select our top track, hold the shift key, select the bottom track, all four tracks are selected, and then we'll hit command G. That opens up our group dialog, we'll name this guitar, select that. Now when we make a change to one track, it'll be the same for all four tracks. Next thing we want to do, let's turn on our volume uh, automation envelope. And you can see that I've already created a, a dip here to demonstrate what's going on. We've got the automation turned off, so we're hearing the signal without any dip. And that's overloading our master. You can see the red lights are back on here. We'll clear those, jump back to our edit screen, and now we'll turn the automation on. So we'll set that to read, play that back. And now when we go back to our master, no overload, because we've dropped that peak just enough. So let me show you how I accomplish that. We'll go ahead and clear all of this. Just select that, turn that off, and now we'll switch to our hand tool or our pointer tool. And what we want to do is create just a little bit of a volume dip within this track, just where that peak is. So we'll pull that down, and we can shape that a little bit to make it follow the kind of the contour of that peak. And you can see that as I was making changes here, the same changes were being made on the other tracks that are grouped together there. Now if you want to make very fine adjustments, you can hold the command key down in Pro Tools, move one of those edit points, and you'll move by a tenth of a dB steps. So you have very fine control over that. So let's play this back now. You can hear that it dipped there, and actually I think it dipped too much. So let's go ahead and turn those back up a little bit. What we don't want to have is this to sound like it's compressed. We want it to sound like a very natural thing where that peak just wasn't quite as loud. Yeah, I think that's more natural if we jump back over here. Yeah, we have no peak in our master, so we've accomplished what we want to do there. Now this type of manual compression, this micro-editing technique, is very useful for controlling any types of transients like this. We've got one here where the guitar was slapped. You can hear that it really created a loud transient, and that's what overloaded our output. But similar things can happen in drum tracks, they can happen in vocal tracks. Just about any track can have those kind of quick spikes, and typically there'll be just a couple of those. And again, you don't necessarily want to use a compressor to, to deal with those, because then you're adding the flavor of that compressor on top of everything. And the other thing is that when you do this type of micro-automation to control just those couple of loudest peaks, now you can go back and apply a regular compressor on top of that and you get much better results because the compressor can be set up to deal more with the average thing that's happening in the track as opposed to dealing with just those loud spikes. I hope you find this technique useful for dealing with transients in your tracks. Thanks for joining me for this video. If you have questions or want more information on this process or on the products that are featured in this video, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or visit Sweetwater.com. I'm Mitch Gallagher.